hello welcome to my channel no chefs here and on today's episode I'm doing something completely different I'm not making Asian dish instead I'm making Georgian style braised beef in tomato sauce the name of this dish is chashushuri and if I didn't pronounce it correctly I apologize oh by the way when I say Georgian you know it doesn't mean the state of Georgia in the United States I'm offering you to join me and travel through food into the Republic of Georgia, located in Caucasus. If you've been following me for a while, you know, and if you haven't, I'm gonna tell you now. I really love strong, accentuated flavors and spicy too. And Georgian food is just that. I've had Georgian food plenty of times and I absolutely love it, but I have never made a dish from that region on my channel. This is the first one, I'm super excited. Just like with any dish, there are many, many ways of making it. And I think that the signature flavor for this dish is coming from this Georgian spice packet called Khmeli Suneli. That's the one. And I think that if you are setting out to make this dish the way I do, it's probably going to be one of the ingredients that is more complicated to find. My way of making it is probably not authentic, but I promise you one thing, it's going to be delicious and amazing. Let's get started. Well, here's everything that I will be using today. This is just about uh, 350 to 400 gram beef. I've got some cilantro and I want to use with stems. Garlic over there, it's about six cloves. Two tomatoes, half yellow onion, a tablespoon of tomato paste, and this is where the main bouquet of flavor is coming from. I got a full and a quarter bay leaf here. I have about a teaspoon of Khmeri Suneli right here, which is that Georgian spice. I had about a teaspoon of coriander seed powder and a teaspoon of uh, red chili pepper flakes. In my case, I actually use Korean gochugang. Then to taste, black pepper and sea salt. I will start with the meat. And in this particular case, I'm not going to marinate it or anything like that, just gonna cut, just gonna chop it in larger pieces. Um, this fat, too much, I think. Gonna just delete a little bit of that. This larger chunk also I will go ahead and remove. But some fat is okay because it, the meat needs to produce its own juice. As you can see, the chunks are pretty big because they will also shrink during cooking. Now, set them aside and let them come to room temperature. Start with an onion and my favorite way to cut is just natural half moon shapes. And we'll just come in and separate into somewhat individual pieces. It's all good. Don't worry about it, and these uh, bigger ones I can cut further. Next up, garlic. Garlic, business as usual. Flatten, peel, remove these uh, root ends repeat and when you're done then go ahead and chop so in this particular case I feel like the chunkier garlic is the better because it's going to be a braised dish so the garlic is basically going to somewhat you know disappear and or become soft anyway but when you cook Follow your feeling, follow your feeling. Don't let anybody tell you how to eat. That's the kind of business I've got going on here. I will add straight to the onion. Tomatoes are next. And despite of what most people do, I'm not removing the skin. I really love it. First of all, it contains a lot of vitamins. And secondly, it gives texture to the dish. So I'm just gonna give it a chop, remove this. Then in slices, 
And for this dish, I'm just gonna go ahead and chop them up. Not as fine as most people do. Again, that is because use your feeling. It's up to you. Now I make sure that I grab a bowl so I can collect all of the juice. It's really important. Juice off the board and off the knife. Here we go. For cooking this dish, you're gonna need a pan with the lid. Everything is going to come together in one pot, which is really convenient. High heat. When the pan is hot, I've got a little bit of uh, no flavor canola oil going in. Just a little bit. Shouldn't need much at all because that's why I left meat with some pieces of fat so that it can create its own juice. And now you have to leave it alone on each side for a little bit so that it gets fried. That, that allows to lock the flavor inside the meat. All right, my friends, take, this, take a look at this. See, that's what I'm talking about. Let's get this image on all of the sides. Look at that, that's gorgeous. So when pretty much everything is browned up and there are no more pink pieces, I'm going straight in with tomatoes. Tomato paste. You can see right away the juice is already forming. I'm gonna go with a little bit of salt to help out the tomatoes release the juice. I'm going to reduce the heat to simmer. I'm going to go with all of the spice packets. Guys, this smells absolutely unbelievable. Now I realize that the traditional way is to wait till all this becomes like a liquid, but I feel like this is not enough liquid. I'm gonna go ahead and add like a quarter of a cup water. Now I feel better. My philosophy is, you know, you can always reduce it in the end. And now, cover with lid. And I'm gonna go for about 40 minutes, then check. So, this is 45 minutes in. Check out this amazing dish. Now, next time I cook this, I probably will omit adding water because the tomatoes definitely gave up a lot of juice. However, I don't mind it to be saucy, so I'm happy with it. The smell here is amazing. I'm going in with onions. The reason that I'm going in now is because I want them to maintain some bite structural integrity. I don't want them to completely dissolve. I'm gonna bring this back to a boil. So here we go, it's boiling again. Give it a nice mix. My gosh, I just can't believe how amazing this smells. I'm covering this again. And now, 20 more minutes. All right, 20 minutes into the future with last 10 minutes being um, sizzling like this on the crack open lid. Look at this. The onions are soft, but they haven't disintegrated yet into the sauce, which is what I prefer. Now, you can just give it a try. Wow, that's fantastic. I feel like salt is on point. I'll go with the uh, black pepper. I chopped up cilantro, the root portion versus the leaf portion. I'm gonna go with the roots in here. Just give it all a quick mix. 
you can see that the meat fell apart here with just a little bit of effort. You can basically uh, braise it to the point of doneness you prefer. This is okay for me. Let's plate. Finally with these leaves of cilantro. Done. Taste test time. Super excited. Get a piece of meat with the sauce and with onion on it and it's piping hot. Oh my gosh. This dish is absolutely blowing my mind. The meat is very tender. The sauce, the tomato sauce is thickened. The onions and the garlic they gave away all the flavor into the sauce, yet they still have the texture. You can, you can definitely feel the bite. The sauce itself is a little bit sour, a little bit spicy, not too spicy. There's this lingering kind of heat in my mouth that I can still feel, but it's not unbearable whatsoever. But the flavor of Hmeli Suneli is absolutely out of this world. If you can find this spice packet, I strongly recommend you try it. It is definitely one of my favorite and I encourage you to make it. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. I have more videos on my channel, please check them out if you have time. And until next time, you know I wish you nothing but the best.